are finishing up our third week of being doing this whole gluten-free, dairy-free um, elimination diet experiment, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, we've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, our middle son, who this was like the driving force behind these um, this decision has had a remarkable response to cutting out the gluten and the dairy. Um, I don't remember if I shared it in the previous videos, but his elbows um, have pretty much, like, they cleared up completely. There's a little bit of maybe scar tissue, you know, like scarring on his elbows. Um, but otherwise, he, like, there's no red bumps. He's not itchy. He's really happy about it and it's been so cute watching the boys um you know have a genuine interest in their diet you know what they're eating and they'll tell people you know at church or whatever no I can't have that it has gluten in it or they'll ask does that have gluten does that have dairy you know they they're they're stepping up and taking initiative in their just in their decisions with food and it's been really awesome to watch we've also had moments of I just want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich so we've experienced emotions all across the spectrum um, the newest member of our family to have big emotions about this whole change is my husband Dave he works um, really hard and I get it most of the time he's at the shop where he can heat up leftovers and so what we eat for dinner is no big deal because it warms up really well and it fills his belly and whatnot but this week I we got sick at the beginning of the week and I didn't prepare food the way that I usually do and so he's kind of been like on his own meal, you know, figuring out lunches this week, which is normally no big deal because he'd make sandwiches and things like that, but no bread makes it a little complicated. And so he sent me the sweetest, cutest, <laughs> I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I need something else because I'm hungry and this isn't enough. And so this week's grocery haul is a little bit different because I am bringing back a few things, uh, mostly for him. But we're also kind of experimenting. We're at a point where we are trying to figure out, okay, which of the two, is it both uh, is it both gluten and dairy, or is it maybe one of them that is the culprit, or is it just in excess? So maybe, you know, limited amounts isn't a big deal if we just really, you know, we pare it down even more. Um, and see because we've actually had like a couple of cheat meals um, when we've been at fr a friend's house or a situation you know we're uh, running around and nothing has happened as far as like a breakout or um, an, an any kind of negative response we've not had any kind of negative response to that so um, we're kind of you know toying with what we're going to reintroduce and how and when. So I did make, um, the decision to get like sourdough bread, I guess is supposedly a little less, um, intense with the gluten. Supposedly. I don't know. You know, I'm sure it varies brand to brand. So don't like, you know, it's not Bible, but, um, and then, uh, we did actually have some goat cheese today which I tried too, and I've learned that my body does not particularly care for dairy. Like I'll have, I'll have a sick stomach afterwards, but the goat cheese did not affect me that way. And I started looking into that a little more and, uh, goat cheese while it's still a dairy, um, is easier to metabolize, easier to digest typically for most people. So that might be something that I even get to bring back into my um diet as you know for consuming food diet not like limiting foods diet but anyways so this whole process has been super educational for me our family um it's definitely helped build better habits that i've been striving to put into our kids' minds for so long as far as like eating more 
colorful vegetables and you know they're young and they stick with like, the same things over and over and over and um, so it's been fun to watch them learn that they like other things and if I cook them a certain way and oh it's not so bad and so this has been an overall I think really good experience and in fact I might even interview each of the kids on their perspective of what has been going on too because I don't want it to sound like I'm, you know, because I'm the one that does the grocery shopping and the cooking that everybody's just at the mercy of whatever I decide. This really was like a family decision and the kids knew it was coming and they've been um, as much a part of it as absolutely possible. And so, um, I think that that would be fun to ask them their perspective of it too. And if I post it, then you'll know it was really, it's good enough and I don't know. I guess their honest answer is what's most important. So anyways, I'm going to run into our grocery store and get some oat milk for myself and the kids. And then I'm done grocery shopping and I'm hungry and you should never go grocery shopping when you're hungry because it never ends well. But, um, but I've done good. I haven't picked up anything to munch on and I know I have yummy grilled teriyaki chicken waiting for me when we get home or when I get home and some roasted vegetables. So into the store I go. Here's the grocery haul. It's chaos right now because it's late and it's dinner time and the kids are excited about food. But anyways, um, so somebody's been really craving a peanut butter and jelly. So that's going to happen. Got a couple of salad kits, honey, barbecue sauce. We got brat sausage, kielbasa, green beans, more sausage. Um, oat milk and then this is where the cheats come in my darling husband is gonna get a meat and cheese sandwich this week <laughs> um, some hot cheese a little bit of plain yogurt plain Greek yogurt and some sourdough bread which I was talking about earlier got the kids some popsicles and got myself a little treat this stuff is amazing by the way awesome awesome delicious amazing stuff so anyways, that's the haul for week three and a half into four of what, um, oh, and then I have a box of Misfits vegetables coming. So that's why there's no produce in this, um, in this haul because it's all coming in a box to my doorstep tomorrow. So anyways, this is what we've got going on this week. So it's Friday and my miss surprise to me Misfits box arrived. I didn't know what I was getting because I didn't, um, I thought I'd canceled it and apparently the only reason I didn't get my last one was because our bank card had expired and then I had updated everything and it proceeded to go ahead and run another round. So this will be my last Misfits box of the season um, because our farmer's market is open. So anyways, we've got some rainbow Swiss shard, which I'm excited about because I wanted to try that with my first box, and I ended up with just red shard. I've got some lemon, some potatoes, some um, acorn squash, which I've never cooked before, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Do you want to flip those, bud? Yep. Just be careful. Don't burn yourself. Um, a butternut squash, which I've also never cooked, and I'm excited to find help something. Help it. Um, some pink lady apples and eggplant. Got to figure out what I'm going to do with that but a uh, little guy. Some red onions, white onions, serrano peppers. Um, iceberg lettuce, cabbage, which I know we love egg roll in a bowl. So can totally make that happen. Some green leaf lettuce and a bunch of radishes, which our oldest was really excited about because he has learned radishes. that he loves roasted radishes. And we are cooking up some tuna patties for lunch and gonna eat them kind of like chicken nuggets and then have them with some fruit and vegetables as well and make hey, it a little hey, dipping like sauce. So, hey, since I have you guys here, I want to ask you what your perspective has been since we, we decided to do this gluten-free, dairy-free thing for a month and we are wrapping up our third week of it. So would you say that, Landon, would you say that it has been interesting and educational, tolerable, or 
Miserable. Miserable. Why is that? Well, part of it's miserable. Okay. So I don't get these sandwiches. I don't get to have like donuts or cinnamon rolls. Okay. Or bread. Okay. So you're I miserable because you miss all the starchy carbs that you had gotten to eat before. Like sandwiches and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So what what has been good that you've learned about it? That I've been able to eat more radishes. And what else? And no, I think that, it, Those are that it's been an experience um, about Hold new, new uh, foods and... The way we have to hold back our favorite things, like a church. Uh-huh, to make it more like a treat. So maybe not miserable, but you just miss things. Mm hmm Okay, so would you say it's been tolerable then? Yeah. Okay. All right, Blaze, what are, you, what are your thoughts on our gluten-free, dairy-free month? Um, because I love dairy. You, so you miss dairy? Uh-huh. Has it been hard? No. Have you tried a bunch of new foods? Yes. And did you like the foods you tried? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? Well, that's good. Some of them. Yeah. What, what food do you miss the most? Um, um, gluten. You just miss gluten? Yes. What do you mean by you miss gluten? Um, I love everything that is gluten. <laughs> <laughs> so you miss like donuts and yeah. cinnamon. And soda. All, soda's not gluten. <laughs> we have soda the other day. So you miss but the cookies you miss the are. cookies are gluten. Yep. So yeah, you miss, they're gluten. But there's gluten free cookies. Yeah, but we can have them. Yeah. Because then I'm in dairy free. <laughs> some are. Yeah. Yeah, some are. So having those things. Hey. So having those things as a treat is, is good, yeah. but you'd be okay without them? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> River, what are your thoughts on the gluten-free, dairy-free month? Um, uh, I actually miss both. You miss both? Has it been really hard this month or not so bad? Mm, kind of bad, kind of good. Okay. So there's been things that you've liked or haven't have been okay, and then there's moments where you did not like this whole thing. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. What do you miss the most? What's the one thing you miss the most? I would say dairy. You miss like cheese and yogurt and stuff? No, not yogurt. Not yogurt. Actually, yeah. Yes, yogurt. So, I can I show them your elbows? Okay. So, we have had a laid-back weekend and tried letting some of the stuff come back in to see what would happen. And his elbow has started to flare up again. And so, I, yeah. And which is interesting because I think it's mostly the gluten. Um, they didn't. The only dairy thing they got to eat this weekend was some mac and cheese. And, but every, you know, like other things they've had were more gluten contributors than anything else. So. And I'm free. Ow! There's always something. Jeez. Never a quiet moment. As soon as I hit record, there's some loud noise or something. Oh, okay. So. I'm going to tell you my mom thoughts as um, to wrap up this video for our like week three and a half of our gluten-free, dairy-free family experiment. So it is Tuesday of our fourth week that I am writing, that I'm recording this right here. Um, and I, I think I've learned enough to be able to, to kind of have a plan moving forward as far as what this might play out like for our family. Um, so the original um, purpose behind this was because our middle son has um, eczema on his elbows and our doctor recommended that we try eliminating gluten and dairy to see if that, um, if there was a positive response from that for his skin. 
And out of the gate, within two days, there was a remarkable difference in his skin clearing up, which was very fascinating to me. And so we have continued on with the whole family participating in this gluten-free, dairy-free um, 30 days of just trying, trying this out for his benefit, but doing it together because everybody knows that, especially for kids, if you as a family are eating all of these other things, enjoying these things, but telling a six-year-old, you can't have that. Nope, you can't have that. Nope, this isn't for you. It would be really hard and um, very isolating. So we've done this as a family to be in it together. And there have been moments where some of, you know, the other kids have said, why do we all have to do this? And they haven't been happy about it. But if the situation were flipped and it was them having to go through this elimination process, they would feel awful and isolated if they were the only ones that had to go without certain things. So doing this together has been a great experience for um, many reasons, but especially with the, the dietary benefits, the skin benefits for our middle son. So the things that I have learned from this experience, yep, see, more loud noise. Um, and moving forward is that there's definitely a response for River in regards to his body and gluten and dairy. Can I say definitively which of it it is or if it is both? No, but I am suspicious that it is primarily the gluten because of the things that we have allowed back in in small bits has been mostly gluten items because let's face it, that's like convenience foods that is when your friends are cooking or you're out to eat whatever those things are harder to pull out than dairy um dairy is in a lot of other things but as far as like just in a basic food item uh dairy is easier to remove or withhold or go out, go without so i am pretty um suspicious that it is mostly gluten it still could be the dairy um another thing i've learned is that kids crave sweets they crave the sugary starchy carbs in every single interview with the boys they have missed things that fall into that category um they haven't said they miss yogurt or they miss cheese really i think blaze did but they miss daddy's homemade cinnamon rolls. They miss waffles and pancakes for breakfast. They miss being able to eat a donut at church. They miss those kinds of things, which kind of makes me sad because food is so good, but more than just cinnamon rolls and all of those sweet pastries. Like, I don't know. There's, it's, it's a, I mean, I love a good donut, but I don't miss them. I can go without. Um, so anyways, limiting that, um, which I thought we did pretty good at beforehand, um, is definitely going to be a continuation from this. Because if you put a yummy dinner that they typically like in front of them, and then you also put in front of them a cinnamon roll or something like that they're gonna choose that every single time and my goal as a parent is to get them to a place where they want to choose the good for you things but still be able to enjoy the treat when it's presented or you know not always want or like overindulge in those um, sugared carbs a hard job um and I'm just being real and raw and honest about this whole thing because I know that we're not the only family whose kids love these kinds of foods so um the third thing I've learned is that moving forward I am going to have to be very creative in balancing a family of five who has varying food needs and wants before this 
we were a family that enjoyed all the things together um, and didn't have to go without certain things um, or anything really. Now, we are a family who has different food needs and wants that need to be taken into consideration because I don't want like food resentment from uh, anybody in the family and being the, the stay at home mom who does all the grocery shopping and all the food planning that falls on me. And so um, I have a husband who works a physically demanding job and this summer he's going to be out in the heat He's going to be in and out of the shop. So there's going to be days that he needs um, like a cold lunch that he can take with him that will fuel him and um, sustain him throughout the day. And then there's going to be days where he's at the shop and he can reheat leftovers. So he's going to need um, options of both. Myself, um, I don't eat dairy. I haven't since the beginning of the year because I learned through elimination that my body functions better without dairy in it and it does kind of upset me um and then kind of keto-ish but not full on I don't know anyways so like you know kind of that direction um our middle son being gluten-free dairy-free and then the other two just kind of limiting that so um from the beginning, I have been very determined to not break our budget by trying to replace everything that we enjoyed beforehand with a gluten-free, dairy-free option because that's expensive, you guys, especially for a family of five. Um, and we're okay without some of those things. Do, do we miss them? Do the kids miss things? Sure. Am I depriving them of good food? No. They just have to grow and shift some of their perspectives with food too. And it'll be a process. Um, and I, I keep looking down, I have some notes down here. I have wrote down four words for myself and just to kind of keep, um, well, another P word, perspective throughout this whole thing and moving forward. I'm gonna have to plan. Um, I can't, try to maintain this without planning and preparation. So plan, prepare, patience, and perseverance. Those are my four words to move forward is a weekly meal plan and not just dinners because that kind of used to be all I did is I'd plan the dinners and then our lunches were um, either leftovers or our staples of PB&J or quesadillas or um, kind of like a, a mom tray of, of different foods that the kids would all munch on. Um, so yeah, plan, prepare. Um, these last few weeks when I have prepared food ahead of time and had um, like hard boiled eggs or cooked meats, um, chopped vegetables, things like that that were ready to go and just needed to be grabbed, that makes a huge difference. This last week when we were sick, at the beginning of the week and I didn't have those things prepared were when my husband experienced the biggest, I don't know if I could do this moment. Um, patience, patience with myself, patience toward our family as everybody's navigating this new lifestyle. Um, lots of patience and grace. And perseverance. There's going to be days where I'm going to want to throw in the towel and say, you know what? I can't do this. This is too much. This is hard. This is one more thing. But with patience and grace, I'm going to have to push, push forward, push on, and just keep persevering. I know I'm going to make mistakes. I know I'm going to mess up. I know I'm going to drop the ball. Um, there's going to be nights where we're at church and the dinner that we have at church is not going to be friendly toward our family's food needs and that's okay. I'm just going to have just the next day. So anyways, those are my takeaways from this whole experience. Um, I don't know guys, it's, we live in a culture where convenience foods dominate and we just planted our garden, which that will be in another video. Um, 
that's going to help a lot having homegrown vegetables ready to go having a freezer full of meat i'm hoping that we get a call from the butcher any day that says that they have a um, hog ready for butcher and that will be the next thing that we add into our freezer um, so those kinds of things will help a lot with like food you know just having food on hand um, but yeah this has definitely been a big learning experience for our whole family um, so yeah if you're a family that is gluten-free dairy-free or looking at doing something like this I hope our journey has been um, encouraging and helpful in some way um, it's just the beginning for us and if you'd like to see more videos of how this plays out in our family and in our weekly eating and uh, meal planning and all of that leave me a comment below um, if you have some tips and suggestions I'd love to hear them and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe thanks for watching